Well, welcome everyone and thank you for joining our webinar. Um, today we're going to be talking about using real-time analytics to improve the ROI of your direct mail channel. This webinar is our third and final part of the Modern Marketer's Best Practice Series called How to Win with Direct Mail. So, so far in this three-part series, we've covered how to integrate direct mail into your omnichannel campaigns, how to get better results with personalization, and today we're going to talk about all things related to analytics. I'm Julie Ginn. I'm the VP of Demand Gen here at Lob, and I am joined with my good friend, Mike Tuffley. He is our Director of Solutions Engineering. Our goal for this webinar is that you walk away with a better understanding of which analytics you should focus on for direct mail and the technology you need to make it happen. All right, so let's take a quick look at the agenda. We're gonna start with how metrics have changed since direct mail automation got on the scene. If you've been doing this for a while, you're gonna really appreciate this before and after story. Then we're gonna give you some tips and tricks to measure and optimize direct mail. And then we're gonna end with the technology you need to be a data-driven superstar. So if all goes well, we're gonna have about 10 minutes left to answer your questions in real time. Please use the Q&A tab at any point to submit your questions and we'll do the best to address them. So we do have nearly 500 people registered for this webinar. So I'm gonna go through a few more housekeeping items before we start. The first is that there is a wonderful tactical guide on direct mail analytics that goes along with this presentation. It is absolutely worth reading. Um, make sure you download that right now from the handouts tab. Uh, the other is if you wanna view any of the other on-demand webinars I just mentioned from this series, you can click this yellow link that is pinned to the top of your chat. And then lastly, no need to take notes. We're gonna be recording this and we will send you a link as soon as it is ready. Um, all right, so that's it. Let's jump in. I'm gonna hand it over to you, Mike. Thank you, Julie. And, and yes, I'd, I'd like to thank everyone for, for attending today's webinar. One of the nice things about having someone who runs the solutions engineering team give these presentations is it really does keep me honest in everything that I say is possible here today, because I have to make sure that my team and I can, are able to support this when you're ready to get going with LOB. So with that said, um, I think the best place to start the conversation about how we can work with uh, analytics through the context of LOB's platform um, going forward is really to take a look at where things are now and where they were in the past. So, you know, typically when we talk to a lot of our prospective customers who are more accustomed to working with our traditional print and mail vendors, they're used to using, uh, you know, somewhat mature technologies being, you know, passing a CSV file with all of your records, uh, some PDF creative through an FTP site down to your printer where some offset printing mass produces the same postcard, then it's handed off to USPS and it's just kind of a, a black box from there. So when you're ready to go back and try and uh, cobble together some attribution metrics after the fact, um, really all you have is the original data list and then maybe some export of data around your conversion metrics to do a manual match back you know, doing lookups and whatnot in Excel. And it's pretty much um, not, not the best accuracy and really not the, the, the best, you know, approach from like a, an automated or intelligent perspective that's going to yield any sort of meaningful and actionable data. Um, and what we're going to do today is really show you how you can improve upon that process uh, working with LOB. So with that said, um, this is how we envision you working with uh, direct mail metrics, you know, your KPIs in smart BI tools to get a more holistic view of the success of your direct mail campaigns. So first and foremost, LOB is, has the ability to track all of your mail through the entire chain of custody from the printer to the handoff to USPS to every time every single mail piece is scanned at one of the USPS uh, facilities so that we have the ability to surface that data back to you so you know when and where something was delivered or whether or not it was forwarded or returned to sender. All of that data that gives you the, the geographic, the timestamps, all of that information around the direct mail campaign then really helps to inform your attribution models from perspective, say like normalizing the data to begin with. You know, if we're gonna be using uh, a relative scale that's actually adjusted for like maybe a higher than normal return to sender rate, it'll just give you some more accurate data. 
that said, we when we think about how things are done today, where it's still very you know manual and, and tedious and, and done in, in spreadsheets, you know all of that all of that can actually be abstracted away through automation. So, for example, using Lob's webhook infrastructure or API endpoints to retrieve this data automatically, and then you have it feeding into your BI tools so that you can marry it up against your um, marketing uh, data, your uh, accounting systems of records data and your web analytics data so that you can actually uh, more accurately paint a holistic picture of the success of your direct mail campaigns. So, you know, it's it's always funny when I sit down with, with some modern marketers who are very um, gung-ho about direct mail, they always say, oh, you know, cost really doesn't matter. We're going to throw a bunch of money at it. But at the end of the day, I still sit down with those same marketers um, after the campaign has been run and we go through all of the cost per acquisition metrics and everything like that. And, you know, if you're, if you're going to be trying to accurately say um, weight what the value of DM had in say your, your multi-touch attribution model, having that knowledge of exactly when every single mail piece is delivered is going to uh, be more accurately reflected in that, uh, post-mortem analysis. So all of those metrics need to be accurate um, to begin with. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to accurately calculate your, your return on investment or your LTV. So one of the analogs that I really like to use, and, and my one hope here today is that everyone in attendance will walk away with this, this one simple analogy is how to think about direct mail with lob is really about how are you doing things with email or even some of your other digital channels today lob really is um like getting an email in your mailbox more than it is you know having a traditional print and mail vendor fulfill a postcard order so with that said you know some of the parallels that i think that really serve to illustrate this um, and I'll just go down the list, are things like deliverability. When you log into your ESP, you pull up a dashboard, you can see exactly you know, your last email campaign, uh, how many successful deliverables were there, how many were bounced, how many may have been forwarded on. All of that information that goes into informing, you know, again, that, that normalization for the success of that email campaign. Um, we can surface that exact same information. We can tell you how much was processed for delivery. We can tell you how much was returned to sender. We can tell you how much was forwarded on because the end recipient had filed a, an NCOA form with the USPS. We give you all that information and in fact, more. So for example, um, some of the limitations that I think about when, uh, when I look at some of the metrics that email has is you don't get to see the, the forwarding email address. Well, when you have NCOA functionality enabled in LOB, you can actually export that data after the fact to get those new forwarding addresses. Some of the other features that I think really paint the picture are around how you kind of design, automate, and execute your campaigns. So for example, you know, I can easily incorporate email or SMS into my uh, marketing automation journeys. I just drop a, you know, maybe a tile into a workflow and set it up on, you know, with some various conditions. Maybe if I'm running an experiment, I can do, uh, you know, random splits or holdout groups. Um, I can experiment with the creative. Think about all of those things that you can do from like a, a marketing automation journey. And then imagine now dropping direct mail. You know, what, what once was this very silo channel where you had to maybe export your data out of your system and then hand it off to a, a printer can now be like fully automated and executed in real time. So for example, um, maybe part of your, your journey is uh, a customer unsubscribes to an email. Well, well, then what next? Hey, let's send them a postcard. All of that can be automated and executed in real time. Now, the, the other thing that I think that is probably the most powerful and probably um, really speaks to what the benefit of working with Lob in the context of today's discussion is, is really around the tracking and the customer journey that channels like email and SMS, digital ads, all afford marketers in that you can have these really long, deep links embedded in emails as like an image. They can, they can take them through to uh, a specific landing page. Maybe uh, you're uh, an e-commerce company that uh, wants to fulfill a, an abandoned cart use case and take them back to uh, that, that shopping cart with the, the, the 
cowboy boots already in the cart. Or maybe you want to take them through to a form that uh, wasn't completed, but it's already pre-populated with the data that you do have on file for them. Or you just want to capture some of those UTM parameters. All of that click-through data, that customer journey that you're afforded in email and other digital uh, mediums now can be mapped over to lob through uh, elements like QR codes and pearls and even some of the other uh, tools that I'll show you later today when we get into the technology. But it really is using the, the, the power of HTML creative in the same manner that you're afforded in email, that's how Lob really does unlock the flexibility of this personalization. And in fact, one of the nice things is, you know, when I say it's just like email, it's actually better. You know, one of the things working with Lob, you're not gonna have to contend with uh, Google and Apple's uh, privacy intervention measures, right? Um, you're not going to have to worry about um, testing in, a, in you know, 100 different email clients that are all going to have to open up the, the message. You, you test it in one Lobs dashboard. And then the other thing is we also have things like client-side JavaScript, which even give you uh, another layer of personalization and dynamic content. And that actually brings me to... So how do we actually go about optimizing um, our direct mail and how do we go about measuring that so that we can, as we the optimization process would necessitate, being able to successfully measure what our, what our prior campaigns yielded. So first and foremost, we wanna be able to use a trackable method. And you know, one of the things that we see you know, the most people are doing today is yes, we can have a QR code. Yes, we can have um, a vanity URL. But, you know, all that can provide you is a, a certain resolution of information if your customers do, uh, you know, click on that QR code with their smartphone or they're able to um, enter that, that vanity URL. Other, or sometimes they'll just uh, go straight to, your, to Google and, and, and maybe do a search. So now it's coming up under a totally irrelevant um, uh, attribution metric, even though, you know, direct mail may have been what had guided them there. Um, that's not how it's going to be reflected. So one of the things that we see folks doing is, okay, let's let's take all of those deep links that we have in our email, um, and we can now map them through programmatically to QR codes. So, you know, for example, you can see some of these uh, letters and postcard samples here each have unique QR codes. Well, we can now print that out literally on a one-to-one -one basis, so you know that you can take someone through to a completely unique experience for the, the endpoint of that landing page, you, that you can be able to measure that click-through data down to the exact uh, letter on which it was printed. All of this is possible through the, the HTML capabilities. And all of this is done programmatically, which I'll discuss a little bit later on, on how to, and how to stand all of this up. And it does give you that same granularity of data at the end of the day that you do with your, your um, with your uh, other digital channels. You know, we, we're even starting to see folks adopting other technologies like programmatical um, approach to, you know, toll free numbers. And, you know, we have uh, the ability to, you know, programmatically print expiration dates. So for example, using JavaScript to generate uh, a real time expiration date to give a sense of urgency to that call to action that uh, whenever the, the postcard is actually created within the lob system. So it will automatically calculate that, say, a 30 day expiration window. And that's what ultimately gets printed. Even though this job runs every single day, you never have to update the creative. And then we see things like programmatically generating, you know, promotional codes or other ways to be able to track all of this. You know, we see in with our e-commerce customers specifically, if they have maybe some high value offers and they don't wanna see generic coupons make their way out into these kind of coupon site ecosystems, this is one way where they can issue them, track them and everything and control for it all programmatically through LOB. So what are some of the variables that we see folks testing? Well, the, the first is probably going to be the easiest and that's just different formats. You know, do I want to, use an eight and a half by 11 inch letter in a custom envelope? Or maybe do I wanna do uh, an eight and a half by 11 inch letter in a six by nine envelope, large window format, or a six by nine postcard versus a six by 11 postcard? Which one of those profiles is gonna stand out more and have a higher response rate? 
Or maybe I want to try out something different altogether, like postcards versus self mailers. All of that is easily done. It's all it is is passing a, a different parameter in your request to lob. And then poof, we could try two different creatives, two different formats. We see folks experimenting with the, the body copy itself. So for example, um, we've seen a, a tendency towards a less verbose body copy in a lot of our customers' creatives today. So they want to um, have a large header and subheader, and then maybe let some of the dynamic imagery do most of the talking. And that's really where some of the additional levels of personalization can come into play as well. So it's not just limited to something that you're, say, printing um, like a, a text on the mail piece, but even down to the, the imagery, the color schemes, the dynamic layouts, all of that is totally customizable on a one-to-one -one basis. So for example, let's say you want to purchase a data set from a third-party uh, data provider, and oftentimes they will enrich their data with some metadata about the each of the households that you're targeting for a particular prospecting campaign. Our customers will take that information and they know whether or not it's a, 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 a family that owns a cat or a, a household that has a dog, and they'll map the appropriate you know, stock imagery of a, of a family holding a cat or a dog, respectively, into the, those targeted mail pieces. You know, we see um, not only limited to data that's within our system, not only data that we're buying, we're seeing customers using data from third-party APIs altogether. So for example, um, using the Google Maps API to print a custom map image with directions to maybe a brick and mortar location you're trying to drive store traffic to. We're seeing customers using Google Street View to pull up a, a, an image of your home. They'll pull some data from Zillow and they'll superimpose the median house value and maybe they wanna purchase your house They'll have all of this hyper-targeted and personalized information, you know, for every single person on that block that receives that mail piece. Um, same with uh, using uh, Google Earth and superimposing images of, uh, of solar arrays on the roof to be able to, to really conjure that imagination of the consumer as to what their home could possibly look like with a, a solar array. But those are the types of creative um, third-party data providers that aren't even necessarily part of the like the data vendor ecosystem. And then oftentimes we're seeing folks that are, you know, experimenting with with different types of like offers, you know, promo, no promo. Um, are we going to do a, a soft CTA where it's like, hey, check out our new uh, fall line versus a hard CTA, you know, sign up for this great lob webinar. But these are all of the things that are easily um, possible and then measurable through some of the analytics methodologies that I'll show here shortly. So A-B testing, um, one of the things that I, I have really come to appreciate in terms of being able to, because um, I'll, I'll admit I'm not a marketer, I don't have any background in marketing. My background is actually in, in physics and modeling uh, physical systems. So I'm really more interested in the data aspect, which is why I really love today's webinar. And one of the things that um, I found really interesting was one of our customers didn't even know where to begin when they were launching a new uh, product line. And they had to undertake a very grandiose A-B test wherein they wanted to create somewhat of a, like a wireframe that would serve as a blueprint. And they were going to map in all of these different elements. So variating um, imagery, uh, header, body copy, design layouts, color schemes, all of that. And they were actually able to spin up thousands of permutations of this one letter, and then they were able to send it out to these small sample populations of folks around the US, and then measure which one of those variants had the highest response rate. They knew exactly when it was going to be, when it was delivered, so that they knew how to weight it appropriately in their, in their attribution models. And they were able to identify those contenders that outperformed all of the others, and then they can continue to optimize on this. Again, if you're going to map this back to your marketing automation platform, using things like a, a holdout group is something as simple as let's let's send one population email and let's send another population email plus direct mail and see which one gets a better lift. All of this is is something that we could stand up, you know, in in like less than a week when you're working with Lob, just because oftentimes these marketing automation platforms are also very easy to um, out of the box get integrated to the to the platform. 
That said, and this is the topic that I am most excited to speak about, is really the technology that drives and enables all of this functionality, um, either within the law platform um, or will be included within the law platform at a future date, or something that can be enabled easily through uh, a, a programmatic approach or through uh, a third party vendor. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is QR codes. Now, one of the things that's interesting about QR codes was this really was like almost a, a dead technology a couple of years ago, right? And it, we've seen this in just incredible resurgence of the technology in the wake of, you know, the COVID touchless menus and, and the, you know, improvements that, you know, we've made in, in terms of our camera phone technologies. So now not only are QR codes just ubiquitous everywhere in, in the physical world, but we're seeing them ubiquitously printed across all of our largest centers of mails, postcards, letters, and self-mailers. The, the nice thing about a QR code is that you can compress so much information into an easily consumable CTA. And when you look at, like for example, um, in, the, in the example that you see here, they can be personalized, they can be stylized and branded, all of these things that can be um, programmatically generated so that literally on a one-to-one -one basis, you, know, you send out a thousand postcards, they may be completely static with the exception of just the QR code alone. In fact, I sent out a campaign just like that uh, a couple of days ago on behalf of one of our customers, because what they want was they wanted the resolution at the consumer level into who was interacting with the medium. If, if I'm going to be mindful of my marketing spend, I want to know who is going to be, who has a higher propensity to interact with direct mail so that I can double down on sending them more mail and maybe uh, rolling back some of the other consumers. The nice thing about this is that you can compress, like, a, uh, like I said, a, a deep link in there that has not only the, all of the tracking metrics, but also can take you through to like a totally personalized uh, customer journey on, on your website. They're small, they're easy to do. Um, we use them on all of our, uh, on all of our uh, marketing postcards internally. And one of the other things is that we're seeing you know, some pretty interesting third party vendors providing some really great solutions. So for example, you know, in this, this image here, you can see that there are actually click through data that's being surfaced for this unique QR code right here. So I can, just like I would with my email channel, log into this platform and, and be able to track the success of every single QR code I generate. Um, moreover, we're even seeing it even more hyper-specialized. So there's, um, uh, one vendor out there that provides QR codes that measures uh, the attribution, not only of the click-through of the QR code, but um, it's, it's specifically targeted to those uh, uh, in the audience that may have mobile applications and you're trying to drive adoption uh, of a particular mobile app. It can tell you exactly when somebody clicks on the link, goes whether or not they've downloaded the app from the various application ecosystem, you know, Google Play Store or, or Apple App Store and whether or not they've signed up and being able to track that journey from, from the beginning all the way to the end, all of that could be unlocked with a, with a simple QR code. So how does native lob technology help you out in all of this, this, this measurement and, an anal and analytics? And you know, while we are going to be introducing some native QR code technology on our roadmap. Um, it's all presently on our roadmap and we're, we're targeting it for release later this year. Um, in the interim, just out of the box, Lob can pr provide you with all of your actual physical direct mail related data. And by that, I mean every single scan event, every time we re everything from when we receive the request to produce that mail piece, um, when we create that digital record to when we hand it off to the printer for manufacturing and mailing to when they hand it off to USPS. And every time that unique barcode gets scanned, USPS will surface that data back to us. And then we can furnish that information to you here in these high level dashboards. So you can see in some of these views, we have things like um, the deliverability. So you, you actually see aggregated rollups of 
where does all of my mail fall into each of these buckets? So of the 10,000 postcards I sent, how many were still in transit? How many have been successfully delivered? How many were forwarded on or, or actually just wholly undeliverable and returned to sender? Not only are these metrics provided to you in Dash, but they're also easily exportable from the platform. So we have the ability to, you know, even if you just wanted to start small, the simplest way is just exporting a CSV file and you'll get a spreadsheet delivered in your email that you could plug right into maybe an Excel macro that you already have set up in service of your, your matchback analysis, even if you just wanted to, to take baby steps all the way through to configuring webhooks that in an automated way are delivering this data in real time back to your system. It's being captured and written to your data warehouse so that your BI tools can pull all of the data in real time so that as that um, campaign evolves with time, you'll, you'll see that cost per acquisition drop and all of this stuff is set up in a fully automated way, which we see you know, our customers with more uh, robust analytics uh, systems in place being able to do, and they can actually see all of this stuff in real time. And the, you know, from a, a strategic perspective, a lot of this data also helps a number of our customers inform, you know, with, with actionable insights, how they're going to execute future campaigns. So you can see here, we have, you know, some distribution, some geographic distribution data. We have some mail speed data. All of this is in the dashboard. And what it provides our customers with is a way to be able to better plan out and execute all of their direct mail campaigns, you know, specifically when they're targeting in-home dates. You know, I had, I had one senior marketer of a very large company tell me, you know, nobody cares about direct mail on the weekends. So they're always targeting, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And what they do is they use this mail speed data to understand when do I need to send my data to lob so that the largest distribution of that campaign will land in market on those dates. You know, it, it can be even more time sensitive than that. You know, if we're talking about um, a, a Black Friday promotion, right? We want it to land as close um, to those, those days as possible without, you know, you don't wanna to arrive too early, you don't want it to arrive too late so that it can't be actioned off of. Being able to execute in a more informed manner really does help ensure that your forecasts will be accurate it helps our customers staff their call centers appropriately. And, you know, it, it really does, you know, say something about, um, you know, the these kind of like dynamic expiration dates. You never want them to, <laughs> if you have a static one, you really never want the mail to uh, arrive in market after an offer has already expired. So these are the types of things that we see our customers using analytics to proactively inform their campaign execution. So the last thing I wanted to touch on is how do we roll all of this up into a more informed analysis? So there are a number of BI tools out there. Um, I created this one in you know maybe a half hour's time using some uh, Google Web Analytics data and some uh, some of our some of Lob's mail data, and what I'm doing is I'm taking data from all of these disparate sources, rolling it up into the tool that's that's going to serve you best in terms of, of performing an accurate analysis, and that's you know a, an actual business intelligence tool like Tableau or Power BI or Looker, and you know the 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 thing here is that when you can marry all of your, say, for example, here, the distribution of in-home dates and know exactly what was the, um, you know, maybe the incremental lift we saw in web traffic in the correspond in the, you know, the, the following days or weeks of when the, the bulk of that distribution landed in market, it really does help us to paint a more holistic picture of the success of our, of our campaign. So, in summary, a lot has changed in the world of direct mail analytics. You know, one of the, you know, when I started at Lob several years ago, um, the, the primary charter was always to bring together the, the online and the offline worlds. And this programmatic approach to direct mail really does help us to do all of that. One of the coolest things that I've seen in recent uh, months was uh, a lot of folks are also including things like uh, 
the, the smart home devices like an Alexa or a Siri invocation printed directly on their postcard. So when you imagine someone going out to their mailbox, returning with a postcard, and then you, you know, presenting that that invocation to their to their Alexa, and now they're immediately interacting with a, uh, a you know in an offline with an offline marketing message, and they're now they're interacting in a digital space, and you're collecting that virtual click through data and being able to capture all of that user information and aggregate it up into like Alexa's skill um, metrics as well. It really does serve how we're doing all of this. And I love that QR codes are now doing the same exact thing. So now we can track all of your KP, all of your KPIs in with more granularity, better resolution and higher accuracy so that, you know, when you are trying to wait how much, you know, when and where is uh, direct mail is appropriate as part of your omnichannel communication strategy, you know, Lob is really the best way to go. And, you know, once you have made those determinations, being able to continuously experiment and then uh, optimize with the channel so that you're getting the most, you know, I understand that, you know, we're, you know, the, the, the current market is, you know, definitely tightened purse mark, marketing purse strings. So have the, getting the, the most lift out of the, the least amount of direct mail is our, our target. And I think that Lob is really the solution to help unlock that for you. And it's all done through technology. And with that, I'm going to thank you all for your time and I'll turn it back over to Julie. Uh, thanks, Mike. That was a great presentation. Um, okay, folks, we want to answer your questions. Please continue to use the Q&A tab and we'll do our best to get to as many as possible. Um, Mike, I'm going to go through a couple of questions we got during your presentation. Um, the first one is just uh, people want to know what other systems they need to automate direct mail. Is LOB a standalone system or do you need to absolutely indicate uh, integrate it with a marketing automation platform? Yeah, you know, the again, me and my team are responsible for all of our implementations and onboardings here, and we always advocate for a crawl, walk, run approach. So Lob does offer a campaign wizard. This is built in platform that will allow you to take a, you know, a data file export from any of your systems and upload that along with some creative and you are literally off to the races sending programmatic mail. Now, when we're talking about what does that, you know, walk and that run phase look like, we usually say, okay, walk is where we now want to incorporate that level of automation into one of your marketing automation or your CRM or your CDP, you know, type of platforms where you could have, you know, a, a number of different execution model types. So, we have folks that are, have webhooks that fire from their system over to Lob anytime some sort of event criteria is satisfied. So let, let's go back to the um, uh, unsubscribed from email use case. A customer unsubscribes from email that automatically instantiates a request to Lob to send them a postcard trying to win them back. Or we'll see something like a, a daily, semi-weekly and weekly batch jobs running. So for example, um, Maybe you'll have a, uh, a remarketing campaign, right? And this job runs every single day. All it does is query your system to see, okay, who has not interacted with our, our, our product or our brand um, in the past 60 days? Every, every day that job runs and it returns a list and this application will read through every single row and send all of those records off to Lob and we'll get mail pieces out to them. And that's running in concert with like a semi-weekly cross-sell campaign or any of the other number of marketing use cases, in addition to maybe a monthly prospecting campaign. So there's a number of different tools and a number of different mechanisms to do all of this. And we will set you up and then stage this out so that you're set up for success to ultimately get to that run phase where everything is as automated as possible, including that feedback loop of data from Lob back to your system so that you can analyze and optimize. Oh, that's great. And then um, like we, we got a whole bunch of questions around deliverability and specifically around address verification and just deliverability rates. So the first question is, you know, how do we make sure that the mail gets to where I want it to go, right? Like how do you verify the addresses before you send them? 
Yeah, and, and I know that, that that becomes more and more of a concern depending on the source of the data. You know, if it's sometimes if it's user entered data, the, the integrity may be lower than say uh, a list that you, you, you acquire from a third party data vendor. But at any rate, there's always going to be some level of inaccuracy or latency. So for example, I've seen customers that have purchased, you know, data sets from third party providers and they, oh, these are NCOA'd, they're cast, all of that. These are good addresses. And then looking after the fact, you would see a bunch of addresses, you know, a bunch of mail pieces that were forwarded outside of the geographical region where this select market campaign was targeting. And, you know, that's just a bad user experience because nobody wants to get a postcard for an offer that's not valid in their area. It's a waste of money. And Lob has the ability to compensate for all of those various use cases. So for example, we have a wonderful address verification product. So a number of our customers will take their data and either they'll run records through the data prior to the execution of a mail campaign, or maybe just, you know, in part of a, a regular data hygiene protocol, they'll just run all of their data through, through address verification. Because not only do we return whether or not an address is deliverable, but there's, a, there's always a, a lot of metadata that's continually evolving. And those are, those are the areas where Lob can supplement where no other address verification product can. So for example, um, we have the Lob confidence score. This tells you um, of the number of attempts that we've tried to uh, deliver mail to this particular address, here's our rate of success. No other address verification product also has a print and mail product. So we, we, this is like a basically a differentiating function functionality that gives you an extra dimension of confidence in whether or not you want to do you know, the determination to send mail to that address. Um, we see folks checking things like vacancy. Um, that's one of the parameters that's returned in the, the address verification uh, API response. So we don't want to send mail to an, uh, an address that's not occupied. You know, if we're sending, you know, maybe during the pandemic, uh, we would use information like, uh, What's the zoning of that address? You know, maybe it's not a great idea to send to a commercially zoned property if nobody's going into the office. So those are the types of things that inform the strategies upstream. But even if you didn't want to incorporate any of those uh, methodologies, ultimately Lob has a really nice mail strictness feature that's built into the print and mail product that allows our users to specify um, how strict they want to impose deliverability um, metrics on their campaigns that are going out. So for example, if I set my mail strictness to relaxed, we don't perform any address verification and everything will go. Hey, sometimes for an acquisition campaign, that's uh, perfectly suitable and that's a, a desirable, they just wanna get as much out into the mail stream as possible. But for maybe those folks that are more mindful of spend or you know, they want to be able to, to optimize their campaigns for, um, you know, like maybe a specific experiment with measurables that they, will, they want to really try to minimize that return to sender rate, they might set it to strict. So what we do is we take that address at the time the request is received, we run it against our AV database, we determine what's, is it deliverable? Yes, then we'll send it. If not, then we'll actually return an error back and say, hey, um, this doesn't meet your mail strictness minimum requirements. And this is actually also built into our campaign wizard tool. So even after you upload your list, you'll find out in real time after the fact, hey, this is the subset of, of records that you uploaded that would not meet your, your mail strictness requirements. I um, appreciate that. So um, I've got a question about, you know, can we send high quality B2B collateral? Maybe you could talk a little bit about our print delivery network and how we control quality through them. Okay, and I'm, and I, I, I'll start by just defining collateral in the sense of the products that we offer. You know, postcards, letters, self mailers, checks, um, all of that. Um, so the, the the nice thing is is it's twofold that we that really helps to ensure quality. One, we have intelligent routing, so we have a distributed network of printers all over the U.S. So one of the problems that I think that 
Um, a lot of customers that are, you know, that have to contend with when they're working in a traditional print mail space is, you know, if you have a nationwide campaign and you drop it off this job at a printer in the, the Midwest, you know, there's a certain subset of that campaign that now has to be delivered all over the US. Every time it goes through a facility, through the sorting belts, all of that, it's going to introduce the opportunity to scuff things up and all of that. Well, with Lob, we are always optimizing for two things. Um, one is the, the proximity so that we can reduce the wear and tear on your mail pieces. That also optimizes for time. So it minimizes the amount of time that, you're, that it's spending in the mail stream. So especially if you're talking about timely or correspondence, I, maybe I'm a financial services institution and I wanna get that offer in the mailbox of my target consumer before the next guy. Um, we can do so by optimizing for that, the, by minimizing the amount of time that it's gonna take to get there. And the other thing is just from a, like a, a standardized uh, production methodologies, we have the ability to, what well, we, we control on uniform equipment. We also have a lot of automation built around things like uh, color conformance so that we know exactly that the a piece that's manufactured at site A is going to be uniform with that that's, that's manufactured at site B within the, the, the tiniest you know, differential of tolerance that we can, that's acceptable uh, to our, our partner operations team. That's great. Um, so I've got one last question and then we'll, we'll wrap this up. What is the best system to create QR codes? That, that's a great question. I think that it really does vary by, by your use case. Um, one, of the, one of the nice things is that there are technologies out there, like um, there's a platform that has a QR code generating API. So if you want to talk about ease of use, um, we can get you programmatic QR codes up and running in your HTML creative in literally five minutes. Um, what happens is we just basically use that link. And then let's say, for example, we want to pass in uh, dynamic UTM parameters. Um, we can specify some of those UTM parameters as merge variables. So what happens is when Lob receives that request, we render the HTML just like a web browser would, and we map in all of that custom content, we go out and fetch that QR code that's generated with the custom content mapped in. So you get that unique QR code that's printed on every single mail piece. Again, this is something that takes literally five minutes that anyone on my team would be able to help you out with. Um, but again, some of the other options, maybe, maybe I want one of those more stylized uh, QR codes. I've seen customers use JavaScript to generate dynamic QR codes that have a little bit more elements of personalization. Um, things like these third-party platforms that oftentimes do have specific use cases that are, um, for example, that mobile application use case, you know, you can still go in and be able to design maybe something that's like more like a branded logo or uh, a branded QR code um, with very stylized elements that are, you know, uh, they're colored on brand with, with your particular company, something like that. Thanks, I appreciate it. All right, so um, all of the resources that we have gone over today at the webinar are available on our resource center at any time. Um, Mike, I wanna thank you for your time and your expertise. We are popping open a question right now, poll question. If you did not get your question answered or you just wanna talk about sending direct mail at scale, please answer yes, um, and we'll get back to you right away. If you're lucky, you'll actually get to speak to Mike directly. Um, and then this concludes our webinar, guys. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope to talk to you soon.